going on guys do what here we are here on viking rise with another beautiful episode on what in the actual duck is going on in this game so today we're going to be getting into gear breakdowns for infantry and porters um so starting off with infantry we're going to be looking at pvp doing that going to walk you guys through everything in here um so special equipment we're going to be looking at um, the best of the best here. So, for infantry, starting off with, we want to go straight down to our bear. And this Axe of Rage here, 13.25% infantry attack increase and a moderate infantry defense. The archer attack and the PvE isn't going to be super big here. Um, with some of this PvE, you will kind of be able to switch back and forth between PvP and a little bit of PvE without really changing too, too much with this piece. Um, moving on here to our headgear, we're going to go into the Hound with this Howler Crown. We got the Infantry Defense Increase. Um, that's going to help us mitigate a good amount of damage, 7.75%. The Pikeman Health and the Rally Capacity here not super important we're just going for that defense it's the highest one out of all of the other infantry headpieces um moving on to our spider for all you arachnophobics out there we got the venom armor um that's going to come with the infantry attack increase a really good um 13.25 percent as well as following up with the infantry health of 4.25 percent and then a good little squad load um, give you an 8.25% increase to uh, rating your enemies. And then we're going all the way back up to the top with our boy the crow. Um, we got another really good infantry attack of 13.25%. We got some porter. Um, if you do throw some porters on there to help carry more, um, that's going to help plus another squad load. So um, I know I went over the archers and I went over... The pikemans as far as pvp um when you're actually going on a pvp run it's appearing like the um the infantry is more well-rounded for taking out um players without a super complicated defense and just raiding a bunch because i know uh infantry and porters have uh, the highest load capacity um, as far as being able to loot the most resources from an enemy player. So, um, when you're going on a kill event or something like that, and you're wanting to make the most of your attacks for getting some resources to recoup some of the troops you're losing as they die, um, it looks like infantry is actually the way to go. Um, if you're just going out and attacking people marching across the map or defending your boy then that's where you might want to incorporate some pikemans and then it looks like archers um they're going to have a little bit of more versatility as far as uh defend defending and attacking but um infantry really honestly it seems like i need to get an infantry um hero build going so that i can take advantage of this loot capacity going on over here um, now going on to the rally side of things, we have our stone golem jabroni over here, mountain shield right off the bat, because that is going to give us an infantry attack increase, march speed, and then that 0.75 for the rally capacity. Um, pretty much all of this right here is super, super helpful, geared exclusively towards your infantry. And I mean, if you're looking down, going full golem isn't a bad way to go for just kind of like a well-rounded it can handle a variety of situations without you having to change it up so take a look at this stone golem guy um the the armor here it might just be what you want to go for for just a, a lazy default setup that's well-rounded when you get into really high levels of play that's when you're going to want to go with like the pvp build that i showed before and things we're going to continue to get tweaked as we continue to progress in our knowledge of the game but well, i'm giving you the best information that i have at this time and that will change as updates come rolling down the line and we get a better understanding of the game mechanics so um next up is going to be our um headgear so right back up here with the howler crown off of our hound um, for your increased rally capacity, 
Um, now we're going to go down to Earth's Embrace, which is back down to our Stone Jabroni. Increase the rally capacity. And then the appendage trusses are a spider. So, once again, increase the rally capacity. Um, you have some moderate defenses and attacks across this build. Um, I think there was even a few HPs along it. Um, you're really on this one exclusively going for the rally capacity. As I said in my last video, I'm not 100% sure how effective that rally capacity is when you look at the damage buffs you would get off of a straight attack PvP build. But just, you get so much more damage percentage off of your troops that ends up accounting to more damage than just adding, um, you know, 30,000 troop capacity to your march. And um, moving on to PvE. So we're going to go right back to our bear with the Axe of Rage because like I said, that PvE piece is going to stay right on there. Um, the Monolith Helm takes us right back to our Stone Jabroni. Another PvP increase boost. We got the Sunset Cape with our Crow. Another PvE boost. And as you're starting to see on here, not all the PvE boosts are equal. Because I think the, um, the Monolith Helm... Let me double check. PvE 4.5% and then... The Sunset Cape with the Crow, 6.75%. So we're starting to see some fluctuations in that, um, whereas I thought before that they were more uniform along certain things like the March Speed Increase, the PvE Damage Increase, and we're actually seeing that that might not be the case. Um, going through the progression on some of this stuff, it just... It's really not making sense. It's a, like There's some of the stuff that when you first get it at a low-level piece... It looks like it's going to be absolute garbage because it's such a low stat and then it ends up being the highest stat on the piece and it doesn't follow the same level of progression at upgrading it as other pieces would. So I'm hoping that they get through and take some time to come through this equipment and kind of clean it up. But, um, you know, we're working with what we got now. Um, the last piece for the PvE was going to take us down to our bear. We know this one well, the strength leggings. It's the same piece we put on for our pikemen. Um, another lower 4.5. Um, so next we're going to get into our porters. And our porters is where I started to find a few interesting things. There is no PvE with porters. And there is no rally. There's like one or two buffs across all of the equipment for PvE. And there's one or two buffs across all of the equipment for rallying. Um, there, there didn't seem to be an abundance of equipment for the porters. Like the infantry. You started going through the infantry and there was a... One, two, three. There was four different pieces for the attack. But then you kind of got a little limited as you went into the headpiece with only two pieces, three for the chest, and then you went back to another five pieces of boots for the infantry. Um, when you get into the porters, you only have four options, and that includes a basic option, which hasn't been included before. For the weapons, you get three. That includes a basic. For the headgear, you get three, which includes a, a basic for the chest piece. And then you get four, which includes a basic for the boots. So we're going to get into the three categories that I did make for the porters, which is PvP, which I, I don't recommend getting into PvP on porters. That's not what they're designed for. They're just designed for carrying a lot of resources. So they just uh, throw a couple of them on your march to get it, you know, some more looting cap capacity. But if you're just, you want to go Leroy Jenkins and stuff out there and PvP, with some porters. Here you go. We're going to go straight to our snake. And we're going to start off with the serpent sword. Um, we got the increased porter attack and the squad load and the increased porter defense. As you can clearly see, neither one of those stats are particularly enticing, but it's the best we got on them. The next piece is going to take us straight down to our boar, which is the abundance hat. Funnily enough, this is the only piece of specialty equipment that has a resource gathering percent on it, but it is drastically much less than the basic equipment, which you're going to see here in a moment. Um, 
Once again, you have the Porter attack and the Porter defense a little bit better than that Serpent Sword, but still not enough to make this a game-breaking attack uh, troop. We're going to go on to the chest piece next with our Werewolf and the Wolfhide Spalders. Um, a very minimal uh, Porter defense increase. He do get a decent March speed increase, but then the next stat goes to Pikeman Health. Um, going into our Stone Jabroni again. I mean, he, that's, that's his name for all time, Stone Jabroni. Um, we got a, a even worse Porter HP, um, a little March speed increase, and then Infantry Defense. So, as you can see, the stats are really not there for these guys to PvP. This equipment that would go on there would help them defend themselves against an attack while they're gathering. But that's really about it. Um, now, having your porters set up like this to send a main march to kill the brunt of the enemy troops. And then send the porters on the back end to mop up a few of the straggling troops and then take a massive chunk of resources that's a viable option but um you're gonna see some options later on that might make you rethink doing a strict pvp build on your porters um we're gonna go right into our gathering speed which is strictly basic equipment all right so starting here viking shield 5.75 percent resource gathering you got pikeman attack and porter attack nominal um, next is going to be our coarse bandana, um, which is a 5.75% as well to resource gathering, but also a 4.25% to squad load, uh, and porter defense as well. As you're seeing, like the resource gathering buffs are pairing with porter stats. So that's just another clue that porters are just there exclusively for, being able to gather quickly and carry a lot. Next, we're going to get on to the chest piece. And we're going right down to this coarse shirt. March speed, resource gathering. That's all you get. And it's the, it's the same exact level of buff on this resource gathering. Um, and it blows that 2% out of the water for the abundance hat. On to the boots. Um, we just get shoes. That's it. They didn't even put a fancy name on this. Just shoes. Shoes are going to help you carry more guys. If you don't know this by now, I don't know how to help. Um, increased Porter attack and the same 5.75%. Now, on the other hand, um, this one right here is the march you want to send out collecting resources when you're actively online so that you can collect as quickly as possible and send those guys right back out again. Now, barring that, we are going to look at a gathering capacity, which is what you're going to want if you're offline gathering, you're going to work and you send them out, or you're going to bed, you send them out. But this gathering capacity setup also works phenomenally for looting resources from players incredibly fast. So, without further ado, straight onto our special equipment. We're going to go right up here to our snake. The Serpent Sword squad load 8.25% increase with two stats for your porter. Um, now we're going to go back to our basic equipment just because this was the best piece that was out there. Um, for our head, the coarse bandana, porter defense, resource gathering, and squad load. There was no other headgear for the porters to increase squad load except for the bandana, which is why it's on here. And it also had the added benefit of that resource gathering. Um, next, back to our special equipment. We're going to go to the Hound for the Magma Plate. Another 8.25% squad load. Um, and then we're going to get over here to the Crow for our Cryptic Boots. Another 8.25% squad load. So all of these are going to increase your porter's attack, defense, HP, guaranteed to increase the squat load, squad load, and then one of them increases the resource gathering. This right here is going to probably be one of the main setups that you have on your porters, just because it's so versatile. Um, and you have such an abundance of hero options for gathering 
and four porters specifically that you can set up two heroes with the capacity for the porters and then the rest of them set up for gathering speed so you can have three or four gatherers out and then one to just loot a massive amount of resources that I cannot, I personally cannot wait to get this gathering capacity set up just so I can show you guys how insane that that is going to be as far as what I can carry. Um, but that's all I got for you guys today. Make sure you share with anybody else that is asking these questions, needs to just come check out my channel and see what the duck is actually going on with this game like subscribe and i don't know maybe you like hearing the sound of my voice hit that bell too y'all take care